I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is PsychAx, Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is dominance is psychological, not physical. This is something I want the men out there to pay attention to. There's a lot of talk on the internet about becoming a more dominant man, about becoming an alpha man, and this process is almost always tied to some sort of physical attribute. Lift weights, get bigger, get stronger. And I'm not saying that those are not worthy goals. Men, all things being equal, you should strive to be in the best shape of your lives. However, there is an important way in which this advice tends to do men a disservice. And that's what I'm going to talk about here today. But before I do, please remember to like this episode and subscribe to this channel. It takes less than a second, costs you nothing, and only a beta wouldn't follow through. So, do the thing. Now, what's the problem with this advice to get bigger, get stronger? Where this advice tends to fall flat is equating pure physicality with dominance. I'm here to tell you that this is not the case. Dominance is not physical. Dominance is psychological. And here's how you already know that I'm right. Have you ever seen like this big, powerful dog absolutely cowed by one of those yappy little lap dogs? I'm sure you have at some point in your life. They're this big German shepherd getting bossed around by this little chihuahua. For whatever reason, that German shepherd forgot what it was, forgot that it was literally 10 times bigger than that chihuahua and that it could bite through that chihuahua's trembling little neck. And that chihuahua was able to psychologically dominate that German shepherd. And once that happened, all the German Shepherd's fangs, all of its strength, all of its viciousness and intelligence were rendered absolutely irrelevant. And that's because the psychological maintains dominance over the physical. If you can dominate the psychological, then you can also dominate the physical that it in turn dominates. This is true across mammalian species and it's certainly true in the domain of human relationships. And here's an interesting corollary to all this. In the majority of relationships that I am personally aware of, the woman is more dominant than the man. And why is that? Is it because the woman is bigger or stronger than the man? Absolutely not. If you took an average man and an average woman and put them in a no-holds-barred bar brawl, I mean, it wouldn't be a fair contest. The vast majority of men would just wipe the floor with the vast majority of women. And I think that's one of the reasons why we don't do that in society. We all kind of understand that it's just not a fair fight. But here's the counter argument. If you took an average man and an average woman and put them in a no hold barred verbal argument, that contest would be just as unfair in the average woman's favor. It would be an emotional bloodbath. And the man would be like metaphorically lying on the ground wondering if anyone got the license plate of the truck that just ran him over. Women are far more adept on average, let's say, in the emotional and psychological martial arts. And it's here on the field of emotion and psychology where the contest of dominance is actually fought in society. So why is this important? Men, if you're out there trying to get those gains, thinking that bigger guns or higher T will automatically translate into being perceived as an alpha, you're not grounded in reality. That's not how it actually is. Remember the German Shepherd and the Chihuahua. Don't neglect your fitness, but also don't pretend that it can give you more than it can. It might also be a good idea to learn how to spar verbally so that you can kind of put up a, a decent fight <laughs> if it comes down to it. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and thank you for listening.